Well, here's a bit of interesting news going on. Apparently, the 10 core was not the flagship Skylake X CPU from Intel, which we all previously assumed, especially me. It turns out that there's going to be an 18 core i9-7980XE CPU, which will be their flagship. It'll be the X series CPUs. They're going to come in an X series box. That's how you know they're fucking serious. It's got X in it, you know, Generation X. Uh, uh. It costs X amount of money because uh, I'm a, I can assure you this is going to be expensive. But don't worry, I've got you covered. Just in case you really want one of these CPUs, here's a website that shows you how much your body parts and organs will cost in the black market. So essentially, if you ooh, oh oh, some of these prices are bad. Uh, a pair of eyeballs only gets you 1500 Fuck that. You can make more money slinging rocks, baby. And you keep your eyes. A pint of blood is $300. Eh. The amount of blood you'd have to give, you'd be dead. You'd be dry. Like a fucking leaf in the end of fall. Oof, you need your small intestines. Your kidneys, they're worth $262,000. So if you want to spend the rest of your life walking around with a dialysis machine, this might be the road to go. But let's quit fucking around and go into the news or the meat of the matter. Uh, the Core i9-7880XE uh, CPUs that have leaked. Uh, when we first heard about Intel's i9 series of Skylake X CPUs, we were surprised to hear that the 12 core i9-7920X would be the series flagship, without a shadow of a doubt. Ending the name of flagship products with the 20 rather than a 50 or higher seemed very odd. Though, if these new leaks from video cards are true, it looks like the series will scale up to a total of 18 cores, which is 50% more cores than were previously thought, and more than enough to compete with any AMD 16 core Threadripper. This will give the Skylake X 6 core, 8 core, 10 core, 12 core, 14 core, 16 core, and 18 core variants. Though the 12 plus core models are not expected to launch with the X299 next month. All recent rumors seem to indicate that these products are not ready for launch in June, which means the Skylake X will likely scale to 10 cores at launch. Here is a slide that's showcasing the X299 support for quad channel DDR4 266 megahertz or 2666 megahertz uh, memory. A new version of Intel's Turbo Boost 3.0, which I've covered in the last video and a different cache structure than the company's previous X99 series of Haswell E and Broadwell E series CPUs. At this time, these rumors cannot be verified. Though they are certainly possible, Intel already created larger than 10 core Xeon server CPUs for their Broadwell E LGA 2011 3 socket, opening up possibilities to higher core counts. If these CPUs shipped with the unlocked multiplier and more consumer oriented feature sets, Intel seems to be worried about Ryzen, no duh there, and Threadripper, as otherwise they would not be shaking up their enthusiast X299 platform so drastically. It's kind of weird, don't you think? For so long, Intel kept you at four cores consumer grade. And if you got enthusiasts, you got as high as like, what was it, eight or 10, but you really paid out the nose for those suckers. And now all of a sudden, it's like we just jumped exponentially in cores. It's ridiculous how much the landscape of CPUs has changed. By the way, if uh, the Xeon processors are any indication of what to expect with prices, they're like over $2,000. So do not be fucking surprised to see the 18 core or 16 core selling for two grand. It would not surprise me in the least from Intel. Because like I said before, they sell it too cheap. They cannibalize their own fucking server market. You know what I'm saying? I wish they would sell it cheaper because I would love all those delicious little cores for video editing. You have no idea how much time I spend rendering. It would drive you crazy. You sit there, you're like, okay, I'm going to let this render and leave and come back. It's still rendering. And that's a 1080p, dude. I tried 4K before. Oh my God. That shit. Forget it. I might as well take a trip to fucking like Indonesia and find myself with Buddhism and then come back and the video would just be finished rendering. It'd be like at 95%. Now let's move on to some other stuff. Computex is going on. It's just started today, I believe. And a litany of 1080 Ti's have been 
pretty much teased and shown off and they're coming out very soon. Right now, the most interesting of them all, according to me personally, is the EVGA 1080 Ti Kingpin Edition, and it guarantees two gigahertz overclocked. Uh, EVGA has finally showcased their flagship 1080 Ti model developed in collaboration with Vince Lucito, and also known as Kingpin. I never knew that. I just assumed the Kingpin Edition was called the Kingpin Edition. Didn't know why. All I knew was expensive as shit. A day before Computex, EVGA invited press members for a PowerPoint presentation following the actual showcase of the finished product. The Kingpin Edition is very similar to the ICX Cooler 2 of the, uh, for the Win Edition 3. Very similar? They look fucking identical between you and me. This one has new copper heatsink hidden behind the mesh. Kingpin has a fully customizable PCB, which is LN2 ready. The IL brackets host non-standard display connectors, three mini DisplayPort 1.3, DVI, and HDMI 2.0. Since all ports are in line, it is possible to remove the backplate and create a single slot solution with the appropriate water block. I heard a lot of people talking about that actually. EVGA guarantees that these cards will work at 225 MHz out of the box when overclocked. The GTX 1080 Ti Kingpin Edition will be available this July. I think it even has copper heat pipes. Yeah, it does. It's very interesting. This is probably one of the only 1080 Ti's I actually have an interest in, but I know it's probably expensive. How expensive, you might ask? Well, we all know it's gonna be over $700, so let's not fucking play for ourselves. The only graphics cards I think that will cost more is a Galaxy GeForce 1080 Ti Hall of Fame Edition. That thing is probably like, two thousand dollars or not two thousand probably like a thousand two hundred dollars i mean it's got leds it has a display on it it says all this bullshit are you ready to game and whatnot but you know what frankly you know not for that price i'll take a normal one because honest to god these things don't seem to the 1080 ti's don't have much overclocking headroom but let's see if they prove me wrong with the kingpin edition msi has also shown off their most recent 1080 ti the lightning z the Lightning Z has now been pictured by attendees of Computex 2017, revealing not only several aspects of the GPU's design, but also the GPU's specification. The new GPU will operate with three different overclock speed modes, a silent mode, which runs at the NVIDIA reference GTX 1080 Ti clock speeds, a gaming mode, which goes to 1582 MHz, and a 1695 MHz boost, and base clock speeds, the Lightning mode, which runs at 16 100 megahertz and a 1700 megahertz all modes except for the silent mode runs the gpu's ggr5x memory at 1100 11,000 megahertz and they are nice enough to give you a table of contents but whenever they show you a table displaying the founders edition between the gaming x version and the lightning the difference are so the differences are so minute it's almost laughable on the Lightning, you get an extra 10 megahertz over the Gaming X version. Basically, the overclock on the, well, the base clock over the MSI Gaming X is once again, you're looking at around 37 megahertz. And the boost clock is probably the most substantial, but really, it's more along the lines of 40 megahertz. I mean, you're getting a, an incremental jump. Uh, this GPU will support the usual suspects, you know, HDMI 2.0, DisplayPoint 1.4, and DisplayPort 1.4, a single DVI port, and let's see, this GPU will be sporting an extra tall PCB design for three slot coolers, so I guess it's something to keep in mind, this takes up three slots, so I hope you have a big enough case, you're not fitting this shit in a mini ITX. And you know what? Fucking A. Really? People only text me when they have problems. No one ever... Oh. Ooh. Ooh, the fury. The fury of my tiny little soul. Anyway, feel free to rate, comment, subscribe if you so choose to. If not, that's perfectly fine with me. I've decided to be a bit more zen with my day. Because I'm really close to losing my shit. I mean, hell. I just told this woman I was working on my car... And I broke some lifetime guaranteed fucking tools that I just paid for. Lifetime guaranteed. They didn't last an hour. 